What is going on, beautiful people? It's your boy, Blue, and welcome to another early look at Train Sim World 3. Today, we're in a massive rail yard in Barstow, California, waiting for an inbound train that came all the way from Houston, Texas. They're due for a crew change, so we will be taking over from here in Barstow for an 85-mile trip through the mountains to San Bernardino. And creeping up, here comes our ride. BNSF 3256, the ES44 C4 has arrived. Welcome to Barstow, my friends. Hopefully your, your ride was okay coming from Houston. But you can see the beautiful model of the ES44 AC, or sorry, C4. And it looks great. We have a nice uh, manifest train. You got four locomotives in the front. And I think there may be two in the back. We'll have to double check that. Um, before we board anyways, uh, we're going to go ahead and inspect the train since it just came in. We're going to walk I'm gonna walk the uh, the length of the train and check the uh, the air hoses. Make sure that all everything is connected and looks good before we go on our journey. Last thing we want is to have a leak or some kind of defect in the actual train um, as we move along. So we're going to go and walk the entire length of the train and make sure that everything looks good in all the couplings. You see we got some really cool uh, freight that we're carrying today. Got some large pipes, some uh, box cars here, which I believe you can open. I think you can open them. And then behind that we have some more uh, tankers, uh, some grain, and all of that. So. I'll meet you guys back up front after I inspect the train. Okay, everything looks good back there. Let's head up the stairs and into the lead locomotive. And get everything ready for our trip. So, as I said, we're only taking the trip down to San Bernardino. Uh, but this train's final stop is actually San Diego. So we have 69, sorry, 6,977 tons of 56 uh, car is all connected here and we are at 3,621 feet long so not that long and not that heavy oh this is actually the wrong <laughs> this is the second one whoops let's go to the front all right now this is the lead locomotive I'm not sure how I got that mixed up but it's all good um, all the circuit breakers look fine as we want them to be I'm gonna hop into the lead locomotive driver's seat turn on our HUD and let's get this baby powered on we do depart in about three two minutes so we're good to go. So first, start off with the generator field switch to on. Uh, you see the throttle handle is actually still in from the last driver. So we'll just leave that in and we'll uh, just make sure that it is in forward. Uh, we'll check the banking comm. We need to make sure that is on. I don't, yeah, we, I ended up checking and we did not have a locomotive at the back. So it's just a four in the front. So we don't really need that on, but uh, it works out. So we'll also get the uh, headlights. Make sure to set some bright auxiliary. That's how I like it. That's how I roll. And we'll check, make sure that our brakes are set. So you see they're set to cut out and trail. We need to change that. To do that, go over to F8, uh, more options, and then operator controls, F4, and then auto brake, cut in. That's gonna be F2. All right, now it says auto brake freight. And then over here at independent brake lead, you need to click on that, which is F3. Now I'll switch to lead. And we are good on fuel, 4,860 gallons. That's good to me. And let's go ahead and get the independent brake as set to full. And the auto brake complete released. And as you can see, we're using the rail driver today. Um, it's an absolute game changer uh, using the rail driver for driving, honestly, any train. I, I drive all my trains. Doesn't matter if it's a German train, a uh, uh, British train, freight train, I drive everything with the rail driver now. It makes things so much easier. Uh, even I even drive it with the um, steam trains as well. So, all right, is our time. We got the green light. Let's go ahead and move this out the way. As soon as I find the click spot for it. Pfizer, there it is. Thank you. All right, cool. So I think one more look over. Generator feels good. Forward is good. Uh, Versa is good. All right, cool. Let's go ahead and release. The, actually, we already released automatic brake. You see they're already released. We look here on the screen on rear. Um, the automatic brake is actually set to 78 at the rear. So it's still slowly releasing. We should be okay to go even now. 
I'm gonna give it some uh, throttle. We'll go to notch three. We're on a 0.7% gradient. So again, whenever you're doing a hill start, make sure your independent brake is on full, automatic brake, fully release, add power, at least three notches, at least in Transform World 3. At least three notches of throttle. Wait for the, uh, the traction effort to climb up here, for your RPMs to climb up, and then slowly release the independent brake. And there we go, we are rolling. And it's that easy. So again, we're not that heavy, and this is really not that steep of a gradient. Uh, and so it was pretty easy, like it was like a piece of cake. Uh, but later on, when we're on a you know a 2% gradient or a 3% gradient, something like that, it's extremely important to get good at hill starts. So it's gonna be a definitely a challenging drive down to San Bernardino through the mountains, but we'll figure it out. Slowly creeping out of Barstow, and this yard is absolutely massive. It's actually, I believe, the second largest uh, marshalling yard west of the Rocky Mountains. Matter of fact, almost all freight going uh, to or from Southern California goes through Barstow, uh, which is pretty crazy. But um, yeah, really curious to, to know how accurate it really is, you know, to date, because I know, you know, it's Barstow has gone through a few changes in the years. But it's still a pretty cool yard. Super excited and happy to have it inside of Train Sim World 3. We see we got some uh, some more trains out there on our left that are kind of there in the sheds, doing maintenance and whatnot. There's a lot of actual freight lying around. A lot of consists. Definitely a great place to do some shunting. A great place to. To even maybe try to build your own train and uh, and drive it out of here. I think it'd be pretty cool. Yeah, we have 49 miles into our first stop. Uh, we will take a quick uh, little crew uh, break. I believe is at the top of the Cajon Pass at the summit. Uh, so we'll stop there for a quick break before we uh, go down the hill in the Cajon Pass. It's going to be extremely challenging. Matter of fact, let's take a quick look at the map while we're creeping out of Barstow. So again, look how massive this yard is in Barstow. Right over here is the receiving yard. Whenever it, uh, trains come in from uh, from either Mojave or from San Bernardino, uh, they continue into here. And then they're processed and sent through the hump yard. And they're broken up into smaller, you know, more smaller trains that then get sent out uh, to other locations and organized. It's very interesting how it works. See over here is uh, what they call the hump yard. So all these trains are being broken up by destination. Over here I believe is the uh, departure yard. So all these trains are basically ready to go or are getting ready, set up to go. And um, and yeah, and actually also over here we have the old Barstow yard. And I believe there may be an Amtrak station somewhere nearby as well. Uh, if you continue right of this track going north, you actually, um, in real life, this continues to uh, Bakersfield. It goes through Mojave, basically the Mojave line, it goes to Bakersfield. Over here on this end, I believe it continues to uh, Yermo, or basically to the east. So if you were going to Houston, you would go that way. Uh, and then all oh, this massive line, and 85 miles of track uh, in total is gonna take us 
probably around two and a half to three hours to do this entire route. There's lots of sidings here, lots of places for industry uh, to uh, pick up and deliver a different freight cargo. Here's the big mountainous area here where it gets really challenging and then all the way down into San Bernardino, California. So a massive map, uh, definitely really cool. Looking forward to seeing what it all has to offer. All right, if you look off to our left, you'll see this is the Riverside Cement Plant. There's lots of uh, consists and freight cars, grain cars, hoppers. Lots of containers, excavators, construction equipment. And a lot of extra track out there as well. If you wanna come out of here, I believe you can come out here and uh, bring bring a freight train out here and drop them off if you like. Or you can come and uh, drive over here empty and then pick up a, uh, a freight train out here and drive it to somewhere else. See lots of track out here on the siding. Again, I'm not sure if this is exactly what it looks like in real life. Probably not. Uh, I think this is a general representation of the Riverside cement plant out here. But uh, yeah, I love to see all the, the static freight cars on the side. I believe you can probably still, you know, couple to those. I haven't tried it myself, but I just assume that you can. Yeah, so that is not Victorville, that is Riverside. We're passing now. That is a pretty cool bridge right there. Um, but it's actually a, a signal, or a, 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 I should say a, a point of interest to let me know that, hey, we're coming up on the Victorville cement plant now. And there's a couple wind fans there as well. If we go outside, you'll see on our left, there's a really cool circle track here. If I go to my map, you'll see right here, it's a bit of a uh, Daytona Speedway right here. <laughs> Uh, but a really cool interesting area. I believe there is a scenario that allows you to do switching around here but Yeah, that track goes into a complete circle And what happens is uh, You'll have like cement tr uh, freight trains come in and they'll line freight trains along around this entire length of this circle and just kind of have them there in queue in waiting uh, for somebody to pick them up or to be processed or whichever that may be so uh, you can see they did put a few static empty freight cars along uh, the sidings here but in real life they'd be a lot more busy uh, it would be like tons of uh, freight cars in that circle there so it'd be really fun honestly to actually do that again there is a scenario I believe that allows you to you to do switching in this area I haven't done it yet but uh, it'd be really nice there's also some uh, cement mixers out here. Uh, looks like European cement mi mixers. But somebody's gonna have to mod and uh, bring this back to America. But uh, yeah, pretty interesting area. Couple SD40s here for you. Or GP38s, I can't remember what number they are. But a couple freight trains there, or freight locomotives to use for switching purposes. A hot dog stand right there. 
a security check it checkpoint some low loaders yeah very nice interesting little area here around Victorville so we'd love to come out here and spend some more time doing some switching or something like that that'd be really fun to do I think and then from there we drive into the city of Victorville Alright, just passing by Victorville, definitely one of the key, I feel like, areas of the trip between Barstow and San Bernardino is the drive right through the middle of the city of Victorville. You can also see on our left side we have a, uh, an auto rack train, uh, Union Pacific, actually. Uh, now, <laughs> here's the thing. Uh, there's a BNSF train driving a Union Pacific auto rack train, right? It, or it's a BNSF locomotive driving a Union Pacific uh, train. Um, now, hopefully, you know, whenever, the, you know, right now I don't have all of my extra DLC attached to my Train Sim World 3, but maybe later on, I, I, I really doubt it, <laughs> um, but maybe later on when I have all that connected, we can actually have Union Pacific uh, maybe kind of share the route because Union Pacific does drive in the area uh, I'm not sure if they use this exact same track because I know that Union Pacific and BNSF sometimes they share tracks sometimes they don't but I do know that Union Pacific does drive in the Southern California region so we know it would love to see both trains on one route that would be amazing so uh, even if we have to do with some type of scenario planner custom thing that will be super sweet to see uh, driving through the Cajon Pass but yeah so we're heading out of Victorville again a key area to see beautiful uh, mountain range around there driving right through the middle of the city and we're still 15 miles from our first stop at the summit of Cajon Pass and even beyond that we still have a ways to go to San Bernardino so now we're climbing up 1.6% grade and to be honest with you this is the easy part the hard part is going down the hill so I'm just gonna take it easy now you can see the tracks have split up if we go to our outside view we see about this crossover so if we had got here just a little bit earlier we could have saw a really cool crossover shot right here but hey really hard to time that I think if I would have left maybe a minute earlier uh, or if we had gone a little bit faster we could have been able to get that golden shot of the two trains driving one over top of the other but one day I'm gonna get that shot one day uh, if you do you know take a screenshot drop it in my discord if you don't mind I would love to see it but um yeah that would be so freaking cool all right we're almost at the top and you can see there's a train up ahead waiting for us looks like a uh, S yeah it's one of the smaller trains Okay, the last signal we passed was a yellow. Uh, so our next signal is a, is a red signal coming up in about 9,000 feet. But we have our actual stop coming up in 7,000 feet. So we'll bring the throttle back to idle. 
with a couple honks of the horn, we just passed a whistle board. Uh, speed is around 35 when we initially let off the throttle. And uh, 6,000 feet is a decent distance, so we'll keep some throttle in and we'll do our best to allow gravity uh, to slow us down and, uh, and give the brakes some rest as we approach the Cajon Pass Summit. Wow, if you look off in the distance, it looks like we're actually gonna go down, but we're still climbing. We were doing 1.5% uh, climbing, and now we're only doing 0.1. So this is basically right now, we're on the highest part, or roughly the highest part of, uh, of the line. Now, there is this additional track that branches off to the right and continues higher and steeper. So that's kind of just an optical illusion to make it look like we're going down, but actually this is going up. So if we were actually playing this in VR, hint, hint, dovetail, uh, we would actually be able to have a sense of height, a sense of distance, and a sense that, hey, we're not actually climbing, but this is going up and this is staying more level. So still slowing down as we're coming up 3,000 feet away uh, from our actual stop marker. All right, back to idle and coming up on 1,000 feet. We'll put the dynamic brake into setup in case we need to use it. Start with applying brakes. We'll go with, uh, let's try 50%. Hopefully, yeah, you know, we might need more. Yeah, we're gonna need more. Let's go full, full 100% automatic brakes. And let's see how long it takes this thing to stop. Again, we can't roll too far. We're not gonna make the marker, that's for sure. Uh, we don't wanna roll the next 2,000 feet and pass the actual red light. I'm really glad that they put the markers so far behind uh, to give us some room for error there. So we are slowing down, believe it or not. Uh, just taking us a while to do so. So we probably could have slowed down a lot earlier, but that's all right, I think we'll be okay. There's 15 miles per hour, here it comes. And we're doing all right. Yep, we're coming to a stop. We're gonna make it, we're gonna be good, nothing to worry about. And there is the whistle board, another one. And there we are. Time for us to take a quick little break and to continue to San Bernardino. Okay, break's over. Let's head back into our lead locomotive and get continued with our drive. It's been a very, very chill, relaxing drive so far. Really enjoyed this route so far. But uh, now this is, this is the hard part. This is where it all can go wrong so first let's start off by uh releasing our brakes we did use all our brakes to get stopped up here so i'm gonna make sure my independent brake again is set to full fully applied and i'm gonna release my automatic brake again the red handle and put my bright lights back on okay so now our brakes are releasing and this is gonna actually take a little bit of time uh because you know it, it has to release all the way back in the rear and I'm going to allow it to, you know, get as as released as possible because we're going to need them for the descent down through the Cajon Pass. Uh, we're going to need every bit of braking we can get going through here. So I'm going to take some time, let the brakes release, and it will continue. All right, brakes to release. We're going to move our reverser forward. Make sure we have an independent set to full. Automatic brake is off. We're going to give it some throttle. We're on a 0.1% gradient here at the... Uh, at the top but it's not too bad so it should be pretty easy getting going we'll wait for the uh, rpms to climb up right there and slowly release independent brake and we are moving you can also see on the screen it says EOT move that means the end of our train is also moving that's a good sign All right, speed's climbing up nicely. We got green lights ahead. We got traffic on the track to our right, it looks like. Yep, looks like a uh, double stack intermodal train rolling in. Now the uh, the crest of this, uh, this gradient is gonna be right around here by this light. And this is when it gets real. I'm gonna have to take it very slow. So I'm gonna put the uh, throttle all the way in idle. I gotta focus here. 
because things can go very wrong. Uh, if we get out of control, we can derail or we can bust through a red light. So I got the dynamic brake set to on. We're also gonna use some automatic brake to help us out as well. So I'm gonna start putting in dynamic brake even now, even before we get to, there we just peaked the crest and there it is, it's dropping off very quickly. So adding in dynamic brake, I wanna get nice and slow, nice and slow. 0.6% and we're doing 18 miles per hour so I'm on dynamic brake 8 now it might seem like a bit much but uh, let's, let's just say I've tried this a few times now <laughs> so I'm going to keep my speed nice and slow we're going to take it slow and, and do our best to make it down to the bottom of this mountain in one piece And we're going to have to ha use some automatic brake. That much I do know. So slowly, and it takes a little bit of patience here, but it's, I believe it's gonna be worth it if we can get this right. You can also see some more clouds have moved in now. It was clear skies earlier. So we'll bring that brake back some more. I'm just gonna play with it because it's gonna co go from as as you saw 0.1% up and almost immediately a 0.6% gradient down and then right around this corner here it's gonna drop down to I believe 3.0 so we gotta be prepared for that and take it slow I've actually tried uh, climbing down this hill a few times and have failed miserably <laughs> uh, if we make it through this I'll tell you about it <laughs> So I want to keep my speed under control as best as I can. Now remember, the back of our train is still actually not even over the hump yet. It's still climbing. And that's one of the reasons why uh, we're staying such a low speed. But I'm just watching it. You can see our speed's now climbing up. I'm going to start putting in more dynamic brake. Just to kind of play with it. The beautiful thing about the dynamic brakes is that it works almost instantly. It's not instant, but it's almost instant. The automatic brake, once you set it, it's set. So you kind of have to find a sweet spot. We're going to have to use both automatic brake and dynamic brake to get us down this hill uh, under control. So finding the, the correct uh, amount of automatic brake to put in and then the right amount of dynamic brake to adjust that is going to be super tricky. You can kind of see uh, the slack of the train bouncing us back and forth right now. All right, here we go. So you see the track is branching off to the left. We are now on the beginning of a 2.4% gradient. And I'm keeping it real slow. I'm, I'm like extra paranoid right now. Uh, I don't want this thing to break away from me. So I'm kind of bouncing between dynamic break three and dynamic break five. Um, so I'm gonna try dynamic break four and see if we can meet the sweet spot there. Honestly, my personal goal and what I'm comfortable with is around 15 miles per hour but trying to keep it below that because uh, if we have to add automatic brake, the act of adding automatic brake is going to cut out the dynamic brake, if that makes sense. And that little transition, that sequence, is gonna basically mean we're gonna have zero brake for a few seconds. Um, so I have to hit turn the independent brake on to bail out to keep the dynamic brake working and in that transition for me personally is where I usually lose the train so again 2.4% gradient and we're just creeping along here I mean hey better safe than sorry right <laughs> So how do you know when to go from dynamic brake to automatic brake? If you're using notch eight and you're barely holding the train at a consistent speed, or you're using notch eight and you're still climbing in speed, uh, then dynamic brake is no longer fully effective. And you may wanna add in some additional braking like uh, the automatic brake. Independent brake is not really gonna help you in this situation. The independent brake is only applied to the actual locomotive itself. 
and not the train and it's not strong enough to hold the whole train on a gradient like this in most cases unless you're carrying empties uh and the air hoses are not connected or something like that look at that three three percent down gradient right now i believe this is the steepest it's going to get it might go 3.2 i can't remember we're holding 8.6 8.7 pretty consistently uh currently we are in notch seven and the back of the train is pretty soon going to hit that three percent gradient too and that's when it's going to get real difficult so i'm already actually in notch eight even right now so what i actually kind of would like to do is to transition to minimum automatic brake so that way we can have the train helping us we can have some more play in the dynamic brake in case it does get real bad so since we're so slow right now i'm going to attempt this this may not work but i'm going to try so let me talk this out we're going to apply minimum braking on the automatic brake that's the red handle and then when we do that we're going to lose rpms in the dynamic brake because it's going to cut it out in order to fix that we're going to go over here to our independent brake and then we're going to bail it out uh, basically just push it back to release again and that should bail it out and the dynamic brake should kick back in but it have to do it fast or else uh, we may gain like 20 miles per hour. So let's give it a try right now while it's a little chill. So here we go. So in uh, auto automatic brake, we're gonna apply a few pounds. Minimum application, there we go. We just lost the dynamic, fell off. And we are gaining some speed, but our dynamic brake just kicked right back in. Beautiful, that's exactly what I wanted. So now we have 83 pounds of the brake pressure and I can start bringing my dynamic brake back now because now the train is actually braking as well. And we're doing this at very slow speeds because uh, it's a bit more advanced if you do it, you know, closer to 30 miles an hour at higher speeds. So for me, I'm not there yet. So we're doing it very, very slowly to make sure we don't have a breakaway train. <laughs> but so far, so good. Uh, brakes are still applying for the rest of the train. I think it has applied now. And we are under control so far. All right, we're still 16 miles from the San Bernardino area. And as you can see, uh, some dark clouds have rolled in and it's now raining. It's uh, not really a good time uh, to rain. Uh, I, I don't need any <laughs> anything else making this even more difficult for me. Uh, we're still under control. I'm still, you know, my goal is around 15 miles an hour. We're using the dyna dynamic brake uh, plus minimum automatic brake. And, uh, you know, with rain comes slippery rails. A second ago, our wheels were uh, slipping just a little bit. So I pulled back to dynamic brake a click and it actually did fix it. But uh, it's really dangerous because what could happen is uh, with the wheel slip, we could again lose control <laughs> um, if we break traction at all. So got to be very mindful and careful with that. Uh, it's still uh, between 2.9 and 3.2% downhill gradient. Uh, just kind of varies across. Right now we're at 2.9 in the front but I believe in the back it's about 3.2. We just drove through that. Um, yeah, we have ways to go still, and it's gonna take us a while. Uh, like I said, I'm gonna take it slow because everything can go wrong from here. So dynamic brake eight, because we're still gaining speed for some reason. And look at that, we're wheel slipping now. We know that from our UI, plus it says wheel slip here on our MFD. But uh, we don't seem to be losing or gaining speed uh, with the wheel slip, thankfully. Uh, so it's doing a good job keeping traction, even though at least some of the wheels are slipping. So keeping our speed down, like, you know, I mean, 30 miles an hour is the speed limit. But I want to keep it at 15 just in case uh, we, we lose grip, lose traction, uh, anything. We have at least 50 miles per hour to play with. Uh, to try to save the train uh, before we have a runaway train. That's the idea for me. 
but bringing it down I break back a little bit look at 3.4 wow I thought the highest was 3.2 now 3.4 percent downhill gradient so we'll keep that up we'll keep the stall seven in there All right, we're approaching San Bernardino, and on our left is actually an Amtrak station. The San Bernardino Amtrak station. So definitely possibilities there. It would be nice to see Amtrak as an additional locomotive to this route. Um, they do drive between uh, yeah, they do drive between San Bernardino and Barstow, I believe. I think they only make one stop, and that's at the end. But it still be kind of cool to see some uh, Amtrak on uh, on the route. Yellow signal, so we're pulling into the yard. Got some uh, double deckers here, or I should say, um, intermodal train on the right. Double stacked, and the. It's about 5,000 feet, about a half a mile from our actual stop, but it's actually going to be around the corner. Um, but this is one of the yards here in San Bernardino. As we're approaching. You see lots of free cars in this yard as well. Lots of opportunities for switching and things like that. It'll be a lot of fun. All right, right in time. You can see the rain is finally clearing up and we are approaching the San Bernardino yard. Final 5,000 feet. And we're gonna go into idle and let it coast in. We do actually, it is actually on a gradient. We cannot get away from this downhill gradient. So I'm gonna bring dynamic brake back in into setup. Set up for 10 seconds. There's some SD40s on our right. Pop open the window, and we'll get stop start stopping here. So dynamic brake into notch. Uh, we'll try notch five to get started. And we'll see if that catches. Yep, that's working pretty good. Add some more, notch seven. And so the dynamic brake can actually slow you down uh, a lot, but you're gonna need most likely the automatic brake to go to a complete stop. Uh, but the, dyna the dynamic brake could actually, in theory, bring you to a stop, um, but it won't hold you there. I don't think so. So you guys see some Union, Union Pacific brake cars on the left, auto racks. BNSF boxcars on our right, some empty flatbeds, and gondolas. San Bernardino is also a very big yard as well. And looking forward to learning more about San Bernardino itself. And uh, while we're waiting to come to a complete stop, I do want to say honestly, I'm really enjoying this route. 
Uh, it's definitely one of my favorite Train Sim World US favorites. I'm right, gonna bring in all the diamond brake here and prepare for automatic brake as well. It's definitely a huge challenge. I've been trying to complete this one quite a few times. And here comes the automatic brake into full application. Independent brake fail off. And we're gonna slide through it, looks like. Come on, I need you to stop. I need you to stop. I need you to stop. Alright, it's slowing down, but not enough. I think I'm gonna dump it. I think I'm gonna dump it. Ah, we might make it. We got 2,000 feet. What do you guys think? Yeah, we can get stopped before the red light. We won't use the. We won't cheat. Use emergency brake. We'll just use the. That the. Uh, oh, in the set, you have reached the edge of the represented. What does that mean? What? That's gotta be a bug. Like, there's all this track here. There's no way that's the end of the map. Like, there's a whole red light. 2,000. I can't. I don't know. I don't know. But I ain't doing this again. Uh, I've tried this mission, or <laughs> this timetable, this service, multiple times, as I mentioned, and it's gone horribly wrong at least five times. Uh, this is my best take. So, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, go out there, try for yourself. Let me know what you think. Let me know how it goes for you. I'm pretty com uh, confident you guys are gonna drop uh, or flood my comments with um, with tips and tricks and everything that I did wrong. And that's okay, because I'm learning. I'll do better next time. Uh, but let me know how it goes for you. Let me know what you think of the route. I like it. Yes, I recommend it. I love it actually. And I want to run it even more. Lots of gameplay here. But until next time, remember, you have three choices. Give up, give in, give it all you got. Peace, love, God bless you. I'll see you guys next time. Next video, I'm out. Dang it, man. <laughs>